All right. Hello, everyone. Jim Staley here, Passion for Truth Ministries, and I am super excited about who we have in the house today. This is going to be an interesting uh, interview because it's going to be kind of a swapped dual interview. And uh, But I want to introduce you to my friend Lex Meyer uh, from Unlearn Ministries. Lex, say hi to everybody out there, Passion for Truth land. Hey, thanks, Jim. Thanks for inviting me on. This is uh, pretty exciting. I'm really looking forward to it. Yeah, I am too. You know, me and Lex have gotten a chance to know each other uh, over the last uh, year and a half or so, and we've become good friends, and we have such uh, a, a, a common a commonality of our thread that runs between us. And that's, of course, the Messiah. But more than that, just the spirit and truth of what we're really trying to do and accomplish. But we're going to save all of that for another day when me and Lex get a chance to really unpack uh, his testimony. But for now, uh, I'd like to just, Lex, just give us a short, um, just give us a short testimony of, of who you are. Like, how did we meet? I don't even remember how we met. And, uh, and then really, you're quickly your testimony, and then we'll swap this around and you're going to interview me on our new upcoming documentary called December 25th on trap. Sure. Um, well, so just kind of a brief, uh, history of who I am. I've, I've been a Christian since I was five. I got baptized when I was five years old and I felt called to ministry when I was eight. And, uh, I, I went to Bible college at, uh, a Bible, uh, uh, Southern Nazarene University in Oklahoma City. It's a, uh, you know, Nazarene Bible College. Uh, studied theology there, and met my wife there, and then um, kind of from there we went to a few different churches, different denominations. We went to Assembly of God, and we went to Foursquare, and and so we've been around a lot of different denominations. And about eleven, twelve years ago, um, I just. All I can, ex the only way to explain it is that, that the Holy Spirit started opening my eyes and started showing me the Sabbath and the feasts. And it was from there that everything just kind of changed. And um, I think around, you know, 11, 12 years ago is when I started Unlearn. And it was basically started as me unlearning the things that I was taught. And I was just blogging about it and sharing about it with other people. And it kind of became, uh, it just kind of turned into this ministry where I was talking about, um, you know, things that we've been taught that aren't necessarily biblical and going back to what does the Bible actually say? And that's really kind of how Unlearn got started. Wow. And I, don't remember, I don't remember how I met you. Um, I know we've, we've, we've kind of uh, chatted here and there over the phone and, um, you know, we haven't actually met in person yet, but uh, I don't remember like how we first got introduced. Um, I know I'd watched a lot of your videos uh, early on and, um you know, I, we've had some phone conversations, but I, I just don't remember how we got connected. Yeah, so. well, we're connected now. That's the only thing that really matters, right? And and you also are a pastor in a church in Oklahoma, is that right? Yes, sir. Tell me about how that got started. I mean, uh, how does that happen? How did God trick you into becoming a pastor? <laughs> well, it, it wasn't a trick. Um, you know, like I said, I felt called to ministry when I was eight. Um, it, it kind of evolved, though. So when I was eight, um, I heard a missionary come speak at our church. And I, I was like, man, I want to be a missionary when I grow up. Oh. And uh, then when I got into youth group, I thought, no, I want to do youth ministry. And then whenever I got into college, I was like, no, I, I feel like God's calling me to be a pastor and church planter. Oh. And um, so it's kind of evolved over the years. And about, you know, 10 years ago, um, we started a home church and we had, um, it was kind of a, oh, what's the word? We just kind of threw it out there on Facebook. Hey, we're starting a home church. Anybody who's in the area who wants to come join us, come on over. And uh, we had a bunch of people show up that we didn't even know. And like just first night, we had a whole bunch of people we didn't know because they followed on Facebook a lot of the stuff that I've been posting. Yeah. And like, okay, I'll go check it out. And we did the home church for about five years. And then um, we started... Uh, the grafted church we did like an official church plant and we we started renting space from another church and uh when we started the grafted church five years ago uh, i think we had around 50 people and so it's a pretty good sized group to start with and then it's grown since then we've had people move here from other states and um you know we i think we're around 150 now uh kind of so on, a, on a fairly 
average week. Mm -hmm. Um, and then, you know, sometimes it gets up, you know, closer to 200 whenever we have special events and stuff. So, but it's, it's it's been great. That's fantastic. I know you being being uh, in the pastor at myself for for many years. It, it is the most rewarding, but dot 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 the most difficult uh, role I have ever been in. And we'll talk more about that because I'm so tempted to just just keep <laughs> going through all that because there's so much we could talk about for sure. Yeah. Um, but but as we transition here. Tell us the name of your, first of all, your, your website and then your YouTube channel, which by the way, you guys have got to check out Alexis stuff. I, I know we're, we're not doing a, a full hour long interview on him. We're going to do that. I promise. Cause he is so, he's got so much to offer and he's such a great guy. And I, I really love him to death. I feel like he's, he's my long lost brother, but his, his teaching material is excellent. And it covers so many topics, especially apologetics dealing with uh, you know, the understanding of well, what I like to call the front of the book and how it relates to us and believers today. So Lex, tell us your, your website name, your YouTube channel and your church. There might be some people down in the Oklahoma area that would love to come visit you. Sure. Thanks. I appreciate all that, Jim. Um, all right. So the YouTube channel is unlearn or unlearn the lies. And you just, just type in unlearn the lies and it should pop up. It's a chalkboard. Um, my website is unlearn the lies.com. And the church is called the Grafted Church. Grafted as in we're grafted in by faith, Romans sure. 11. So it's G-R-A-F-T-E-D, Grafted Church. And we have a YouTube page for that as well. We live stream on Saturdays. Um, and then our website for the church is grafted.faith, F-A-I-T-H. Um, so if you want to check us out in any of those places, uh, that'd be awesome. Lex, thank you for uh, for for sharing just a few minutes of your of your journey, for sure. Yeah, thanks for asking. Hey, so um, I I wanted to talk to you about this video that you made. So I, I know that you've done quite a few videos in the past about uh, the holidays. You did the truth of tradition, and then you did some, uh, you know, more specific one-off, you know, individual things over the years. And, and I've seen a lot of those videos, probably, I'm guessing probably all of them, because um, I, I, you know, I used to watch, I still do, uh, your videos and stuff. And I really appreciated the uh, truth or truth or tradition video you did years ago. And that was something that actually was really um, helpful for me when I was first getting started. And, um, and I know it was helpful for a lot of other people I know. And so I was curious, as, as I watched this, this new video that you did that, you know, I was able to preview recently, um, what made you decide to go and revisit this, um, this topic? And, and the thing is, I, I was kind of expecting it to be, oh, yeah, I've heard that before. But there was, there was nothing regurgitated in this video. Everything in this video is brand new information. And I thought, this is not, this is not just a truth tradition, uh, you know, repackaged. This is a brand new video that I've never seen before. Um, and, and I thought, well, what, what made you decide to go ahead and dig into this again and go deeper than you did previously in your other videos? Yeah. Um, thanks for that. So yeah, this is, this was a complicated topic because, you know, truth or tradition, we never intended, uh, and had no idea that it would be as popular as it was like it, it really just kind of took off, you know, with honestly millions of views in multiple languages. But we did have some some pushback um, in the last five years when I was in captivity. Uh, someone had emailed me and said, hey, uh, people are picking on your truth of tradition video. And there's a couple things in there that that they uh, they can't find resources for. And people are going back to Christmas. And I literally remember reading that email and saying out loud, what? Uh, I just, I was like, wait a minute, what do you mean people are going back uh, to, to Christmas? This makes no sense. Even if, even if 20% of that video uh, could not be sourced, that's 80% of it is accurate, right? So I had real struggle with that, but I couldn't do anything about it, of course. But I started my research uh, while I was in prison. And um, as the father uh, brought me out, uh, I, I just felt like Holy Spirit was saying this year, it's time to revisit this. It's try, time to put this thing to rest. And either uh, I have just been dead wrong on the original research, all of it, or uh, the, the the fact is that other people were throwing the baby out with the bathwater and it just needed to be tweaked. So uh, I really thought, Lex, that, that I could just take truth or tradition and um, take out some of the parts that I could not find sources for um, and just redo it. Well, in the process of doing that, um, as a researcher, and I know you know this uh, as an academic, 
um, you start spider webbing in your research, right? So you, you go down one rabbit hole and then that hole splits into four more holes. And what I discovered is a uh, uh, tremendous amount of contradiction among scholars. There was scholars saying this and this scholar would say that. And then I would, I, I would raise my eyebrow and go, wait a minute, this scholar is literally proving this, but he's saying something different in his commentary. And then I would find out he's Catholic. And, and so he was actually biased in his yeah. own research material. And so uh, what I thought I could have done uh, by November or December for last year's uh, Christmas um, blew right through there. Months and months went by of research. And then, and then Lex, what happened was I went to film the first half, 30 minutes of it, and I discovered uh, something that was both depressing and eye-opening at the same time, which was I discovered that I wasn't shooting truth or tradition. I was literally only answering one single question, and that was, where on earth did we get December 25th from? And, uh, and so that's why this video that's, that's coming out on March 25th of 2023 here is not the replacement for, tr for truth or tradition. We're still working on that, believe it or not. We might have Christmas in July uh, video, but okay. this actually is just a one-off, uh, uh, an ancillary video that will come off of that video, and it's called December 25th on trial. And the whole point was to solve this question that apparently uh, detractors had made very popular while I was gone, which was, oh, December 25th was chosen because the Catholics uh, had come up with that date early on with church fathers. And it's, there's no paganism that was attached to it whatsoever. It doesn't come from pagan origins. And I remember from the original research that I did with Truth or Tradition that, yes, there was pagan origins there. I just needed to find solid uh, first and primary and secondary and tertiary uh, evidence to prove that. So um, December 25th on trial, bottom line, came out as, an, as really uh, an accident, um, but it really, in a way, um, solved the question, I, I think, uh, that, that people had in their hearts is, did it come from paganism or not? And where did 25th of December come from? Why did they choose that? Is that really his birthday or not? And, uh, and, and I'm hoping that for the viewer, uh, that it will answer that question. Yeah. So I'm guessing you probably were hoping to have this done before Christmas, but here we're doing it in March or did you say March? Yeah. You know? Okay. And, uh, I was thinking about it and I thought, you know, it, it actually may be good that it's coming out, um, you know, long before Christmas instead of right before, because then when people watch it and they're not. Um, in the the hype of the holiday season and they're not caught up in the emotion of it they're detached from it right now you know christmas is over their springs around the corner they're they're planning different things and they see this video they're not going to be as emotionally attached to christmas so when they watch it maybe they'll be able to hear more from it and receive it more um what's the word with uh Maybe an open mind, open heart. Yeah, with an open yeah. mind, yeah, without without just you know putting up the defenses all automatically. Yeah. So maybe it's a good thing that's coming out later. Yeah, I think so. And you know, the irony is is that we're releasing it on March 25th, and a lot of people don't know, but that's actually how they came up with the original December 25th uh, uh, date was the ancients believed there, there was a pagan uh, understanding and a Jewish tradition that great men died and were born on the same day. And so because the ancients believed that, 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 that Jesus, Yeshua, died on March 25th, which happened to be the spring equinox, uh, they said, oh, he must, have, he must have been born on that date as well. But instead of using that ancient formula of died and born on the same date, they just interestingly changed it to he was uh, 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 conceived on March 25th. And then they rolled nine months forward you know, to December 25th. So uh, the irony is we're actually we're actually releasing it on the same day that they said that he, that he was, uh, he was conceived. So, uh, but I, I do agree. I think it's going to be easier for people to unpack this and not feel the, the, the pressure of having to make any decisions about it once they watch it. Yeah. So as you were uh, doing this new research and you're finding all this new information, what do you feel like was the most significant thing that you came across that you're like, wow, this is awesome. You know, um, there were so many, to be honest. I mean, you kind of mentioned it earlier. I mean, it's kind of packed with just one after another, after another. Um, 
so much. I, we were really concerned that this was going to be too academic uh, and, that, and that people would not be uh, uh, able to follow along, you know, with the academic uh, level of it. But so we had to add a lot of graphics and motion stuff to, to make it more interesting. But I will tell you that there is a couple of quotes that just blew my mind uh, and quite frankly, just absolutely sealed the deal for me. Because uh, look, what, the biggest question was this. It, it was, why did the church choose December 25th? Did it come from paganism? Well, I found a quote uh, from the 1100s, okay? This is a Syriac bishop, Jacob Barsalabi, and he says this. <laughs> this is crazy. He says, quote, the reason then why the fathers of the church moved the January 6th celebration to December 25th was this. They say, it was a custom of the heathen to celebrate on this same December 25th, the birthday of the sun, and they lit lights then to exalt that day. Even Christians were participants in these rites and ceremonies. When, that, when therefore the teachers of the church saw that Christians inclined to this custom, they established a plan. And what was that plan? The true natal feast would be celebrated on this day, December 25th, and the Epiphany on January 6th. And so I, I don't know about you, but like that is a powerful quote. It flat out says, this is why we as Catholics moved the date to December 25th is because they had a pagan sun god worship on that day. And the Christians were falling into paganism by, by celebrating that day. And so they tried to take it over. Uh, end of story, drop the mic, it's, it's over with. So that was probably one of my most favorite quotes. I'm looking up a, uh, a quote real quick. It's uh, Charles Spurgeon. Um, have, have you heard any of his stuff on Christmas? For sure. It's actually in the original tr uh, Truth of Tradition, I believe I have that quote. Yeah. Um, it's something about like, you know, if, if it could be proved that these popish festivals are have any biblical merit, then I'll do it. Basically, yeah. I remember the exact quote. I was, I was going to try to find it real quick, but uh, you know the gist of it. Yeah, um, that's sure. my favorite. That's one of my favorite um, historical quotes about Christmas, though, is, is Charles Spurgeon. And I like pulling that up to people and be like, this is this is what, you know, somebody said not that long ago, you know, was yeah. 1800s. And uh, he's a very well known preacher. And it's like, you know, Charles Spurgeon. Uh, he, he had issues with Christmas. And so, you know, it's like he wasn't even that long ago. Look, we don't know. I, I, I don't think there's anybody alive today as a Christian that has any problem with Charles Spurgeon, right? I mean, Charles Spurgeon right. is like the, the golden child of pure Christianity that you right. could say is a poster child, like the ancient, like the old Billy Graham, like the original Billy Graham. Who's going to say anything bad about Billy Graham? But Charles right. Spurgeon had serious issues uh, with this particular holiday. Yeah. Um, so I, I remember you were telling me, uh, not so long ago about as you were putting this together, a lot of the spiritual attacks that you were going through and, uh, different stuff that was going on, um, relating to the, the process of putting this video together and how you felt like, uh, you were coming under attack, uh, during that process. Do you want to share any of that and just kind of go into some more detail about what was going on there? Yeah. You know, I will tell you, Lex, uh, there is never in my life, and I don't mean this with any exaggeration all my wife could back me up on this and my staff. I have never worked on a project that was this difficult in my life. I mean, all the way back to high school and any projects that I was required to do there, even when I got my master's in theology, there was not, and that was some difficult stuff. I have never had a project this difficult that was this taxing emotionally, mentally, spiritually, uh, all the way across the board. So it, it started off with this. Everything's going smooth in my life. I decide the first day to start filming uh, the tr new truth or tradition, what I thought was going to be truth or tradition. I'm all ready to go. I'm mic'd up. I got all my clothes ready, home, hair combed, all that. And all of a sudden, doorbell rings, and I go to the door, and it's a sheriff. A sheriff is at my front door. Now, yeah. if you've gone through what I've gone through, there is nothing short of close to a heart attack that can happen when the, when the, when the sheriff shows up at your door. Because I remember the last time that it happened, and that was not a good outcome. So my, my wife almost passed out. My children are literally whimpering, freaking out, and my heart drops. And, uh, and so it ended up not being a big deal at all. She just had to drop off uh, some paperwork that had to relate uh, to my case, and it was no big deal at all. But I could not film that day. I was emotionally traumatized by this moment, and there was no way to recover from it. So it, it, it was like PTSD. It was one of the first times I realized 
I have, I, I have, PT- I understand PTSD. I understand people that go through tremendous trauma and then something triggers it and it's yeah. game over the rest of the day. So that's how things started. And then from there, as I progressed, uh, I had extraordinary spiritual attack. Uh, there were demonic entities that showed up at, at our house, manifested uh, both on our front porch, inside our house, strange things were happening. Um, in my, every time I came into my office and I started doing research, I had this extraordinary, I mean, beyond imagination vice that was, it was just closing in on my head, like headaches, but they weren't headaches. They were like, it's hard to explain. It was in the spiritual realm, but it was manifesting in the physical. I could hardly focus. It was that powerful. And, uh, and then it started. And then the moment my editor took the film uh, and started editing it literally like the same day, uh, he had a manifestation of, of, of really a demonic attack on his physical body where he could not raise, I think it was his left arm or his right arm. He couldn't even raise it. He couldn't even hold his baby. He could hold nothing. He could, he could type, but he could not raise his arm, went to the doctor emergency room. Doctor said, we don't even know what, what you're talking about. Like we, we're not finding anything wrong with you. We have no idea why this is happening. Right. Uh, and that kept happening until the day that that I couldn't take it anymore. And I decided, you know, I'm going to humble myself. And I'm going to go pub- public and I'm going to ask people to pray for me because of the attacks are just they're too crazy. It's just too much coincidence. And yeah. he had no idea that I had asked for prayer. But within 20 minutes of asking for prayer, number one, like well over 70 percent of what I was feeling just went away. And instantaneously, within 20 minutes, his pain in his arm was gone. Like it'd been for weeks he'd been dealing with this and it was miraculously healed. And it wasn't even just that. He has a, he had a, a newborn baby. She's under uh, six months, I think it is. And a name Maddie, beautiful little girl. He's from Columbia. And, uh, and she's, she got a temperature so hot that they had to take her to the emergency room. When they took her to the emergency room, they took her temperature. It was totally fine. They send her back home. The moment they, that she walked in the door, immediately, her temperature came back and we had to pray over her and have people pray over her and instantly it went away. So we began to see that the enemy did not want this project to proceed. Like this is flat out, uh, you know, I guess what Paul says, you know, a thorn in the flesh, like the end, we don't fight against flesh and blood, right? We fight against principalities and powers of this present darkness. Just a lot of us don't see it, recognize it, or even want to give it credibility. Like we'll quote that verse, but then we don't live as if, we live as if people are the problem. We live as situations of the problem. And we don't even believe that the enemy has any power or authority or capability of affecting technology or influencing us or really trying to slow something down of a work from God. So yeah, it's not a short answer, but it was absolutely difficult. This project was, I hope to God, the, the next one is nothing like this one. I hope truth or tradition is much easier to film and produce than this because this was difficult cool you know i don't i don't understand whenever i saw people um posting on facebook and and things like that i heard people come to me and saying hey uh you know are you hearing about this and uh there's people who are in this movement who are turning away and saying okay we can do christmas again and and i had friends call me and say hey you know what do you think about this is is christmas okay and i just couldn't believe that that was even a conversation we were having because i remember when i was in Nazarene Bible College, I had professors tell me, oh yeah, Christmas was a pagan holiday. We Christianized it. I, I remember uh, seeing clips on TBN and, and various other Christian broadcasting uh, programs where, you know, well-known Christian pastors and, and leaders would say, yeah, Christmas was a pagan holiday and we Christianized it. And I'm, I've, I've seen so many books and, but they all, uh, they all say, but it's okay. You know, we Christianized it. It's okay now. We can do it, but now we have people saying, "Oh, it was never pagan to begin with," and I, and I couldn't figure that out. Like, why are they saying it was never pagan? I thought it was pretty unanimous across the board. Everybody knew it was originally pagan, and we just Christianized it. And that was that was what I was always taught: is well, we Christianized it, so it's okay. Uh, so this new idea that well, it wasn't really pagan to begin with. I thought that was strange. I couldn't figure out where that was even coming from. Do you know any anything on why they would say such a thing? Yeah, I, in in kind of discussing this topic with a friend of mine who was originally a detractor, who now uh, has has uh, uh, fully understands that, that that Christmas is is definitely comes from pagan origins. 
Um, where they get that from is what there were early church fathers early on that tried to figure out the birth of Christ, when the date was. And they came up with virtually every date in every month uh, of the year, literally. Right. And there were a couple of them that had guessed December 25th using superstition. They weren't using academic reasons. They were literally using superstition that, that okay, if Jesus died uh, on December or on March 25th, he must have been conceived on March 25th. And so therefore, you know, nine months later, December 25th. So what happened was the church has never throughout history ever said, that, uh, hey, we chose this because early church fathers calculated it, you know, in their, in their chronographs. Uh, that it, No, they admit full on heavy that we did this out of syncretism, that we completely tried to hijack this date. Christians were, were, were doing this, and we wanted to hijack it and take it back. Um, and then what happened was uh, all of this, this uh, people on YouTube, and, and there was a movement of saying, hey, Christmas pagan. So the church retro retroactively in the in the last decade went back in time, found some dates from early church fathers, and said, "Oh, this is why we chose it." So they're changing their narrative because of the embarrassment uh, now. So uh, that's really where people came up with that. And and if you don't know the history of why they came up with that date, and then how uh, all of uh, uh, December twenty fifth as the original solstice was already celebrated uh, by as the birthday of the sun gods, which, which I demonstrate irrefutably uh, in this video, um, yeah. then of course uh, it becomes, oh, well, the Catholics chose it. And what's really fascinating, Lex, is that traditional non-denominational uh, Christians don't believe anything that Catholicism has to say, right? But yet we've got people that claim to follow the whole Bible, right, spirit and truth, that are literally defending Catholicism in changing their tune, and then right. that, that somehow changed their theology, and I, that was kind of mind-boggling to me. Yeah, well, it, it's when you argue with somebody and they're not interested in the truth of the matter; they're just interested in defending their stance. That's the kind of stuff that happens, though. Is is people will they'll dogmatically defend their stance, and they'll they'll take on viewpoints and perspectives. And arguments that they don't even necessarily agree with just to defend their stance against you know whatever you know opposing stance there might be and and i think sometimes people get um illogical even uh in trying to do that and rather than saying you know what i, I i'm i want to pursue the truth and i want to find out what you know what's really going on here yeah. they want to dogmatically just hold on to their tradition i guess you know yeah you know, I have got a great clip that kind of illustrates, and, and do you remember the clip that it, it's animated and it shows the Pope and it shows him making this decision of December 25th and then what the people say, let's go ahead and roll that clip, show that clip, uh, because I think they'll really enjoy it because it actually is perfect for this conversation right now. So let's go ahead and roll the clip. Those who support this argument are saying that the church didn't choose December 25th because of any kind of syncretism or merging of pagan ideas. Yet we're supposed to believe that they chose December 25th because a few early church writers came up with that date using pagan traditions and superstitions? That doesn't make any sense. So there you go. That's a good clip to kind of illustrate, don't yeah. you think? Yeah. Oh, yeah, that was funny. Um, I really like the uh, the way the animation portrays it, though, because it's it, it kind of makes you think, really, why? You know, it it. I, it really kind of sets it in in place that this is this is absurd. You know why why would anybody put up with this? Um, yeah, no, I, I I love how he puts it. You know that in, in the animation that he says, hey, we we didn't choose uh, December twenty fifth because of, it came from pagan origins. We chose December twenty fifth because uh, because of, of pagan superstition pagan calculation. Superstition. You know, yeah. <laughs> like that makes no sense. Uh, but yeah. but we believe it. You know, somehow there are people out there that believe this. So, yeah. For sure. <laughs> yep. Um, all right. So as as you were putting this video together and uh, compiling all this new information and and getting this teaching ready, I know originally you had one motive in mind and, and it shifted over time. W what is your intention with this video now? Like as, as your vision for this video, what do you hope this will accomplish when people watch this and what do you want them to get out of it and what do you hope it will will do in their life? Yeah. 
So this video is, and, and all of the rest of them that will come in the series, because we've got truth or tradition right behind this. We've got, when was Jesus actually born? We got how to determine uh, if something is pagan or not, and how to put it in your life, a litmus test, if you will. Um, all of these are not designed to fill our heads and just give us more information. It's really designed to challenge the inward soul, the mind, will, and emotions of our motivations of why we do what we do. Like, if we're going to say that we're going to worship God, then we need to do so in spirit and in truth, right? So if we're going to do in spirit and truth, then that means that we need to kind of know what the truth is so that we can begin to adjust our lives to it. And then we adjust our lives to it using the spirit of love and faith and kindness and all the fruits of the spirit. So really kind of the motivation here was one, to solve this issue once and for all. Like that was my first main thing is to bring unity to this issue, to a final decision that can never be uh, uh, questioned again, bring some uh, some finality to it, praying that that finality would bring unity, and then challenging people. And what I do at the end, as you know, is is I go over the, the feast days and show, hey, this is what Catholicism is really trying to hide. This is what the enemy is really trying to hide, is the calendar of God. So why, while while the debate is is whether people want to debate whether or not Christmas is pagan or comes from paganism is not really the real debate. Uh, when I was researching it this time, the father had just dawned on me that no, that's actually just a uh, you know that's just one fly in the ointment. But the entire poison uh, it, it is that the enemy is trying to hide the calendar of God. That's the the, the danger of Christmas and Easter and the Catholic uh, schedule holiday uh, schedule is it takes away uh, from God's calendar. And if they would not have done this, we would be celebrating the feast days of the Lord, which are starting to go viral in Christianity. They're starting to see uh, yeah. tremendous value in it. And uh, and I'm praying as more and more uh, of these videos go out and, and, and other people create them, that, that God will begin to stir the hearts of his people to come back to do Bible things in Bible ways. We do not need uh, to be following uh, the, the the Catholic uh, holiday schedule. Yeah. So I again, I just want to say thank you for letting me preview this video. Um, that was that was quite an honor actually to be asked to do that, and so I really appreciate that. And I just want to say I really you did a great job on it, and I'm looking forward to um, when you post it and share it with everybody. What the reaction of all those people are who who have been um, on the fence or um, who have been saying opposing things and saying, Hey, Christmas is okay. It's not pagan. I, I I'm looking forward to seeing their response after seeing this video, because I feel like, um, this video just did such a great job of just, you know, putting that nail in the coffin to say, this is put this, this issue to rest. Um, we've covered it, exhausted it. And there's, it's beyond doubt that this is definitely, uh, December 25th is definitely a pagan uh, date that was borrowed uh, yeah. by Christians over time. And, and I think you did a great job of, of proving that. Well, I appreciate that, Lex. You know, um, one of the things on that note that we will <clears throat> find is is when this goes public, um, like anything that's controversial, it, it's going to be attacked, right? We're going to see that. And I'm okay with that. It, 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 it breeds discussion. It breeds dialogue. But I will tell you that I'm, I'm going to kind of, in a way, prophesy this a little bit based on experience. I'll use that word loosely. Uh, is that we're going to find out who the real pastors and shepherds are, uh, because the, uh, already uh, I know that one of the detractors who is a pastor, um, he immediately just said, you know, I'm going to be thinking about how I'm going to present this to my congregation because I put myself out there as one of the big proponents that Christmas was not pagan or came from pagan origins. And I'm going to have to tell them that, hey, new information has come out and uh, and we were wrong and uh, you know, our original perspective on this uh, was right uh, to begin with. So I think what's going to happen is, is it's, they're going to be tested in their heart of, of whether it's about the truth or whether it's about uh, upholding the pride uh, of a position. And so um, I, I think we're going to see that. So, so it's this, I believe, as you said, is pretty straightforward information. It's academic. I didn't come up with it. I just researched it. It is what it is. It, 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 it's all true. But at the end of the day, it's going to challenge, I think, the pride, don't you think? Yeah. So there's uh, what you just said reminded me of, of a quote that I, I remember hearing. It's I think it's some kind of a a proverb or, you know, like an old Jewish wise proverb or wife's tale, wife's saying. 
And it's um, an honest but mistaken man, once shown the truth, either ceases to be honest or ceases to be mistaken. Oh, wow. And and I thought, man, that is that is a powerful statement because you can you can believe a lie in ignorance. But once you're shown the truth, you have to make a decision. Am I going to continue believing this lie or am I going to change and, uh, you know, believe the truth? Yeah. And that's. Well, I think I think ultimately, like, that's kind of the whole purpose of the word of God, isn't it? Is like it presents the truth like it is the mirror, right, mm -hmm. that, that we look into and it presents the truth. And, and either we completely submit to that. And, and honestly, let's just be real, like, especially as leaders and people that kind of put themselves out here, like that's going to rub against our pride sometimes because we're not going to always get it right. And I, God does that on purpose, not because he chose not to give you the truth the first time. It's because sometimes we need a test to find out if he needs to test us to find out if we're really working for him. Right. So every, I, I've said this a million times is that everything is, is an interview. All of us are being in, in an interview for our promotion, whether or not we pass it or not uh, it, it is up to us. And, and most of the time, what keeps us uh, from passing, in my opinion, is, is flat out pride. Like pride is really difficult. I know I've struggled with it in my own life. I'm not going to lie. I, I'm not the most humble person in the world. I struggle with pride and that dance between the, the, the confidence in Christ and the pride of the flesh. That's a dance that every leader struggles with if he's totally honest. And so uh, for me, um, this was a blessing to be a part of this. As difficult as it's been, uh, I truly believe that this is going to bless a lot of people out there. At least that's my hope. I hope that we did a good enough job, that our team did a good enough job. I'm super proud of our team. They put an enormous amount of energy into this. This is not just a talking head. Uh, as you saw from the clip, there's a lot of animation, a lot of of B-roll and, and moving parts. And um, so, yeah, I think it's going to be fun. It comes out on March 25th of this year. It'll be public. So get ready for it. Yeah. Yeah. Just, just a second when he said that it was a really, they did a really good job producing this video. Um, you know, it was very entertaining. It was very educational. Um, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't something where there were slow moments where you got bored there's nothing like that. The whole thing, it just moved along at a great pace, um, full of information. There's lots of times where you might have to back it up and rewatch it again, though, because you it's like, wait a minute, I just missed something really important. You have to back yeah. it up and be like, all right, let me listen to that again, because I know that was significant. Yeah. And uh, so, but it, it is great. And to cram that much information into such a, a short, compact video. Yeah, 40 minutes. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, really, this could have been hours, you know, could have been each you know, it could have been three or four hours of content that just got, you know, condensed down to the most important stuff. Um, and I, I think they did a great job of editing it and you did a great job of, of uh, writing it and, and filming it. And it was really good, really good quality video. Well, thank you, Lex. And uh, thank you everybody out there that's watching right now, uh, this interview, this has been a blessing to have Lex uh, part of our program and for him to, uh, for honestly, for Lex, for you to say that this was high quality, that means a lot to me. For you to say that this was compelling uh, of, of a documentary to you means a lot because you are a teacher, you are a researcher, you're an expert in your field, and uh, and that means a lot. So, so thank you for that. Uh, guys, uh, get ready. De uh, March 25th, we will be releasing December 25th on trial. Uh, get ready for it and uh, share it with everybody that you can. And uh, let's see if we can't make an impact and to draw this line in the sand once and for all, uh, not for pride purposes on either side, but truly to bring unity uh, to this subject so we can move on and begin the process of learning the spirit and how do we do things in the spirit in love. That's super, the most important. Right, Lex? Amen. Amen. Absolutely. All right, guys. Well, uh, shalom, shalom, and we will see you uh, next time. Thanks, Jim. Was Jesus actually born on December 25th? Why do we celebrate Christmas on the winter solstice? And did the Catholic Church originally choose December 25th just because it was an existing pagan holiday to a Roman solar god? We're gonna find out all of this and more as we travel back in time over 2,000 years ago, looking at Egyptian hieroglyphics, ancient sun worship, we'll even dive into the writings of ancient church fathers and Catholic bishops and find out what they have to say about the topic. 
We're gonna get to the bottom of this. Let's put December 25th on trial, my friends, and find out what the Roman church is actually trying to hide.